Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now in today's tutorial, I plan to cover debugging using the Remix IDE. The Remix IDE is one of potentially the most powerful debugging tools I've ever come across and it is so useful for finding out what is going wrong with your code. Now you may or may not have noticed when you're doing any sort of throw exception in Solidity, whether it be a direct throw, uh, an assertion, a requirement or a revert, it simply states that an exception has been thrown and doesn't give you much detail, but it does give you a link to the launch debugger. Now, I think this can always be a little bit overwhelming when you're first kind of getting into Solidity, especially with the Remix debugger, but it is actually a phenomenal tool. So what I plan to do is cover it in three aspects. First, looking at debugging things in the stack, and then looking at debugging things in memory, and finally looking at debugging things in storage. So to jump straight on in, what I've already done is created a contract and I've created uh, three functions. Assignment is essentially looking at things within the stack. Memory is obviously looking at things in memory and finally storage, obviously you've guessed it, is looking at things in storage. So let's create our contract. Now all of these will fail. I've designed all of them to fail and the reason I've done that is to allow me to launch the debugger directly. So let's start by uh, looking at the assignment. So obviously exception during uh, execution of our dot code. Okay, so let's start looking at this. Let's start by launching the debugger. Now, the first thing that we notice about the debugger is it gives us a block at number and transaction index or hash. We can go ahead and ignore that because launch debugger is already pre-populated these. This transaction um, sort of like guide bar, glide bar at the top is actually allows us to step through the code very seamlessly, as well as the step into, step over and so forth. Uh, sort of buttons we can also access. We can look at the instructions of which are being executed or the opcodes or the assembly essentially, but I'm going to leave this to a later tutorial because I plan to cover a bit of inline um, assembly within Solidity uh, and I will probably use this as a quite useful tool, but for now I'm going to not overwhelm you with too much and just look at the basics. So we are looking just primarily at the stack. Now there's always a key thing that I look at every time I'm debugging anything in Solidity and that is the Solidity locals. Now as mentioned obviously this is something to do with the stack so we're also going to expand the stack. We can ignore the rest for now because they're not too useful to us. So let's start stepping through our code. What we see first is the call to the assignment uh, function and that's what's going to appear first in our stack. So if we step over that, now what we're doing first is we are assigning a uint um, val1, or my val1 should I say. And once that's been executed, which we'll see now, we now have reserved a bit of memory in the stack which has the value of zero. And you can also see up here my val1 is equal to zero. Now you might notice that it's actually jumped to the second um, sort of like instruction in our function and not actually done the assignment yet. Well, the reason it's doing that is because it's allocating the memory within the stack first before it actually starts assigning values. So if I step over that, there should be two values in the stack with a value of zero, which is what we have now. So one here is essentially my val one and zero is my val two. You can see my val1 has appeared here because that is the order of events which has occurred. You can't see my val2 yet until we actually hit it. But the memory has already been allocated for the stack. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is the value of my val1 is first, or the, sorry, the constant of 1 will get loaded into the stack and then assigned to my val2. This is due to sort of like assembly reasons or, or basically construction reasons within the code. So as we can see, the, val the constant value of 1 has already been added to the stack, and then it should get assigned to the second variable, which we've done. Now, because we've accessed myval2 already, that should appear straight away in our locals. It's still got the value of 0, but the constant 2 should then appear in the stack, like so, and then be assigned to myval2, which will appear here as well as here, and then disappear from the stack. So there's our value, there it is in the Solidity Locals. And this is kind of the point I was highlighting. We can see that these values are now stored locally as well as these are the two values in the stack. It's not always that easy to see where values are in the stack. Um, but if you actually see, of, uh, see how the values appear or get, be put into the stack, you can usually deduce which one is which. 
But in this case, the Solidity Locals is probably the most important thing to look at. As you can simply see, we're asserting that myVal1 is equal to myVal2. Obviously, we can see that here, but let's just assume that the input is coming from an external source and we can't see that. So we can simply see that myVal1 is equal to 1, myVal2 is equal to 2, and therefore that's never going to be true. It's always going to be false and fails. Pardon me. And that is simply why the assignment or the stack allocation is failing or the stack function is failing. And that is a great way of seeing how things are basically operating within the stack. You can see here that these two values have now appeared in the stack and what that's doing is loading them in for the comparison um, in the actual instructions and then they'll disappear and then return the value of zero because they've not matched or that's the Boolean value of false. And then that's when basically the assertion tops out and returns failure. So and that's the end of the transaction. So the next thing we're going to look at is the memory allocation. So if we launch that once again, it's failed. Let's launch into the debugger. Now you've probably guessed already because we're looking at memory allocation, we're going to um, bring up memory, but we're also going to bring up solidity locals as well. This time I'm going to skip the stack because we've already seen it. So very similar to before, let's just step over. You can see first a block of memory has been allocated. Okay, now when we start stepping in, we are already stating that our string is to be stored in memory. So let's step into that. And as you can see, we've had some extra blocks of memory stored. Now we haven't actually allocated the value test to our memory yet, but if we step over that now, we can now see more memory has now been allocated and the value of test appears in our memory. Now, it always isn't that explicit to see the actual value in memory. Uh, this is just the ASCII value of what's been stored in memory, which is actually just kind of useful to us. So we can obviously see that our, our, our string test is in the memory. It's also a good way to actually see if your memory's been, uh, if your strings have been stored appropriately as well. And I found that before that was actually kind of useful to see that. We can also see in the solidity locals that my string is also equal to the value test. And all I'm doing here, which is probably where the extra bit of memory came from, is I am basically converting my string to a bytes and then finding the length of it. Now we know it's not gonna be a length of 10 because we can clearly see here, it's only a length of four and we know that's gonna fail. So there we have it and failure. And that is the end of the function call for that. And the final thing that we're going to look at, let's have a look at the storage allocation. So if we launch the debugger once again, now you've probably guessed as well, we're going to look at the storage completely loaded, but once again, we're going to bring up the solidity locals. Solidity, solidity locals are just an absolute godsend for this. Now, what we're going to do is first start stepping through. Because VARS has never been interacted before, the storage is actually empty. When we first start interacting with it, what we have to do first is state a vars because it's dynamic, it's basically a dynamic array and it has no sort of uh, predefined value set to it. We're telling it we want to push a value into it. So the first thing it actually does is not actually push a value into it. It allocates the space within the array to actually add, to basically allow it to be pushed in. So the first thing you'll see is a value appear in storage. Now that's not actually our value here. As if you've noticed, it's got a value of one. What that is, is basically the size of the array. Now the size of the array is only equal to one because we're only pushing this first value in. So if we can see here, we're still at the state of pushing that value into our array. So when we step over that now, you can now see a second value. So this first value is actually the size of our array. And the second value is actually the value that we've just pushed in. So if we now try and push another value in, we should see this first value increase to two and then eventually see a third value appear to be the value of three. And actually in this case, solidity locals is actually useless to us because we don't actually store anything locally. So if we step over that again, we can now see the first thing that's done is increase the length of the array because we need to allocate the size and space in the array before we can add a new value to it. And then finally add the value to our array. So we've got an array size of two here with values of two and three, which is what these are here. And then we're simply saying we want to assert that the length is equal to four. Now we already know that it's not gonna equal to four because we know it's definitely a size of two. And therefore it's gonna fail and result in an exception being thrown. 
And there we have in a nutshell a very simple overview of how to debug Solidity using either stack, memory or storage variable allocation. I'm going to leave it there. There's a bit more that we could go into with Solidity, such as instructions, uh, call stack, call data, return value, but I feel that these are more applicable for debugging uh, sort of just generally easier things within Solidity. And obviously, like I've mentioned, I'll go into this in a bit more detail. But that is basically it for now. Now, if you found this tutorial useful, give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment box down below. And if you could subscribe, that would be much appreciated and keep you up to date with all of my videos. But until next time, I wish you good luck and I'll see you around.